Data moshing is a genre of glitch art that you create by destroying some of the information that makes up a video file. Data moshing effects are a little hard to describe, but basically the video starts to crumble or fall apart or even explode as you're watching it. Sometimes the pixels stick in place or smear where they're not supposed to. The effect can be pretty creepy. Like other methods for creating glitch art, data moshing can be unpredictable. It takes some trial and error, some patience, and honestly just some luck to get a good result. In this video, I'm going to show you how to data mosh using a Python script called Tomato Pie. The first step is to download a copy of Tomato Pie. It's available on GitHub. I'll put the link in the description, but as you can see here, it's just github.com slash itscasper slash tomato. On the repository's main page, you can read a bit about Tomato and learn what it does, but it's just a single script file that we need to work with it. So you can click on the file here, and then I like to click on the raw button to view the full source and then just right click save as or control s in the browser to save a copy of this script to your computer by the way as you can see in the source code here tomato was created by casper ravel so thanks casper next you're going to need a video to data mosh it should be in the avi format and i recommend finding or making one that's about 10 to 20 seconds long if you have a video and it's not already in the avi format cloudconvert.com is a quick way to make that conversion in the web browser just select your file, choose AVI as the target format, and hit convert. When your file is ready, just click download, and now you've got an AVI file. If you don't already have a video clip that you want to data mosh, then you can get a clip of just about any video on YouTube with a few steps. I'm going to show you how to do that using Giphy.com. So Giphy has this button up here called Create. So if I click that, it gives me an opportunity to paste in a URL from YouTube. Just copy, paste. And then pick the spot that you want to make a GIF from. I want to make this one as long as possible. And then you just click Continue to Decorate. Of course, you don't have to decorate it with a caption or anything, but you do need to wait for it to load. Sometimes this takes a minute or two, depending on the length of the GIF you're trying to create. Once that's ready, you'll have this Continue to Upload button. And here, I'm going to set this one to be not public. And say Upload to Giphy. It does a little bit more processing here. Once it's ready, I can do all kinds of things with this GIF, like share it with other people. Uh, but what I'm interested in doing right now is accessing the video version of it, which is available if I click on Media, and I can just download the MP4 directly, just clicking on Download there. If there's some other GIF that you want to work on from Giphy, you can download a video version of it as well. Click on Media. There's a bit of an extra step. You have to copy the MP4 link, and then paste that in the web browser by itself. And then you have to right click, and so I'm in Firefox, so I have the option to save video as, and then I can have access to that, uh, that original video. That file I downloaded from Giphy is an MP4, so I still need to come back to cloudconvert.com, upload it, and convert it to an AVI. The next step is to create a Google Colab notebook, which is where we're going to do the data moshing. Doing this in a Colab notebook may seem a little unusual, and it is. Normally, I would run tomato pie just on my command line because it's a Python script, but what I wanted to do here was find a workflow that let anyone do this the same way. One big drawback, of course, to working in a Colab notebook is that all the files that I upload to this notebook will be temporary. So anything I want to keep, I need to make sure I save it when I'm done working. To get started, I'm going to upload the two files that I have so far. I have the uh, video that I want to work on. I call that one bb underscore training dot avi. And I also have tomato pie that I need to upload here. Now in this notebook, I'm not actually going to be writing much code or really any code. Instead, I'm going to be using this notebook as a way to access a command line environment, which you can do in any kind of notebook like this if you prefix whatever you type with an exclamation point. So for example, if I type an exclamation point and then the shell command pwd and hit shift enter to run the cell, it'll give me the results of the pwd command in the shell environment that sort of exists behind this notebook. And so this is just telling me that I'm currently in the content directory. If I do exclamation point ls, that should list the contents of the directory I'm in right now. And I can see the two files that I just uploaded, bbtraining.avi and tomato pie. The first thing I'm going to do with tomato pie is have it print its help instructions or help page. And I do that by, first of all, invoking Python because I want Python to run this script. And then I type the name of the script I want to run, tomato.py and then add the argument dash h, hyphen h. I hit shift enter to run that, and then it prints the help for this file, and it shows me some of the options that I can, that, uh, I can use. I'm going to leave this cell displaying the help information just here as a reference as I work, uh, but now that I've confirmed that tomato pie is here and it works, 
it's finally time to try some moshing. Now this workflow, I will admit, is kind of awkward or it takes more steps than it probably should, but this does work and that's why I'm going to explain how to do it this way. So Python 3 to say Python, I want you to run this script and I'm going to give it a couple of new things now. Instead of dash H, I'm going to say dash I, which the help tells me is how I specify which file I want it to work on, and that's going to be BB training dot ABI. Just type the file name just like that. And there are several options, but if you just do it with no options, it does perform a pretty basic kind of mosh. And so let's see what we get if we run it this way. This also will just let us confirm that it actually works. And it does. Okay, great. So in the output, there's a couple of things it kind of tells you um, that are helpful. It sort of tells you what step it's on, which is helpful if it breaks at a particular step, you can kind of figure out what went wrong. But also it tells you here how big of a file it created. And that's a good way to just basically check to make sure that what happened actually makes sense. For example, if it came up with a final IDX size of like two, that would probably tell me that something went wrong. So I did create this file here, bbtrainingvoid.avi. All right, great. So let's take a look at it. I had to download the API file to my computer and then open it in my video viewer here, which is celluloid, and we can see the video playing. I've got it on a loop just so we can see if anything looks different and something happened there. And <laughs> okay. like right at the end, his mouth pops open in the, in the midst of all that noise. Uh, what's going on in the background too? That's, I mean, that's by design, that's not glitching. Uh, but yeah, I love how she sort of emerges from the wall to yell at it in his mouth right at the end. Okay, so that's interesting. Uh, great, so uh, that's a, that's, it confirms that the, the glitching process works. Um, now let's try to change some of the parameters and see what else we can do to this. One of the arguments here, dash K or kill, is named a little confusingly, I think. It took me a while to figure out what's happening, but what I gather is that this is removing certain frames that have a lot of data in them, like iframes. Iframes are full-size grids of the entire pixel uh, canvas. And what happens when you remove an iframe is sometimes the motion vectors for the next set of frames pick up the imagery from a previous iframe. And that's what happens when you get that sticking effect where like this guy freezes and then the employee that, that he's talking to kind of emerges from him as the background. And you get that effect from P tomato pie uh, in a more pronounced way, the lower you set the kill value. So it's it 0.7 by default. It's not explained here in the help, but I found it in the source code. And we get it, it gets glitchier if we make that a lower number. So let's try that and see what we can do. So let's set it here by adding dash K and then let's do 0.4. One thing I forgot to mention is that tomato pie usually does a pretty good job of naming the output file after the parameters that you give it. In this case with the kill parameter, it doesn't add anything, but void is the, the default uh, file name addition. So it will always do void if nothing else. So I'm gonna download it again, see what it looks like. Okay, wow. So yeah, quite a bit glitchier. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> yeah, wow. So it still has that sticking point where she's coming out of the, the wall there, <laughs> but oh boy, that's, that's really doing some work. Yeah, I'm really happy with that. <laughs> the little mouth thing at the end. I don't know why that cracks me up so much. Let's see if we make this even lower. Let's take it down to point 0.2. And this probably will be noisy to the point where it's not super interesting. And that's always kind of the risk when you are glitching like this. Sometimes you go too far and it's not, not interesting anymore. Yeah, so it, it's, right, um, it's just this kind of quivering mass of pixels. Yeah, I don't know. It's okay. I, it, this is not my favorite. I like the one before a little bit better than this one. And this kind of trial and error is what you do when you're trying to make glitch art. You just sort of play with different parameters until you get something you like. I should probably watch this video. I have no idea. It looks like they're arguing about something, but I don't know what you would be arguing about like in a blockbuster. Uh, in the video, like she's talking to somebody and then this guy comes on the monitor and starts yelling at her. I'm going to try to demonstrate just one more data mosh mode and it's going to be the bloom effect. I say try because I've had limited success with this in tomato pie. I've done it the manual way before and it, you know, it often can look really interesting um, but in tomato pie I haven't had as much luck yet 
So the idea is that you set it to the bloom mode by typing dash M and then choosing the mode. You have all these to choose from, although some of them actually don't, don't work at all. And if you look at the source code, it says that. Um, but uh, bloom does supposedly work, so let's try it. Uh, with the bloom effect, you can add these two additional parameters. And it's kind of confusingly explained here, but what it says on the GitHub page is you do dash N for whichever frame you want to duplicate, and then you do C for however many copies of that frame you want. And what it's gonna do with those is copy it 50 times right in place. If, those, if that frame that it copies has motion vectors in it, you'll get a blooming or smearing effect, and it can look pretty cool. So let's try it and see. Um, but like I said, my mileage has definitely varied, and I have not totally been successful with this. Okay, yeah, so he just froze. So right there, that was the the freezing there is the um, was the copying, not that one because that was the original iframe sticking. But let's see what happens. Let's see it again in this loop. Yeah, right there. Like I said, your mileage can vary um, with the bloom effect. When it works, it can be awesome, but when it doesn't work, it's just it's just frozen. Well, I wanted to keep trying with that one bloom effect on this video, and like I said, it really just does take a lot of trial and error. It took me about 15 tries to get the right moment to glitch, but if you set the end value to 78 in this one, you get this effect. Check it out. So right there, that's that, that frame had enough motion vectors that it produced a lot of chaos and actually erupted in all these colors, and it sort of sticks this thing to his face and it's a, it's a pretty good effect. I think that one worked out really well. So really it's just as a matter of picking the right number, which you're just guessing at first, but then you kind of have to modify your guess until you get it right. When you finally get something you like, you should probably make a durable copy of it so that it's possible to share it. Remember, you've been breaking apart the video codecs, so there's a good chance it won't work in a lot of media players. There are basically two ways you can do this. What I've done here is I advanced the player to a point that I thought was interesting, and then I just took a screenshot of it. That's a pretty safe way to get something. You can also try to convert it to a video format that's going to be safer. And once again, cloudconvert.com is a pretty good way to try this. Here's that video with the blooming effect converted back into an mp4, and it seems to be pretty stable. So much so that I'm going to try it and upload it back to Giphy to see if I can share it. And I guess that worked, so I will share the link in the video description. Once you settle on a workflow, try different modes and different parameters to see what they do. Remember, it's an unpredictable process, so sometimes it won't look great, and in many cases, the file just won't work at all. It's a fun process, but it can be frustrating. Just be patient with yourself and keep trying different things until something works. And that is my quick introduction to data moshing. Thanks for watching.